Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Baby Lock Jubilant. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make buttonholes. Now, as you can see, there, there are several different kinds of buttonholes that you can make using this machine. It's really nice and versatile. So for your keyhole buttonholes like this, that would be these right here. That's what this punch is in your uh, accessories. You would pick like a block of wood or something, put that under there, put that right in the keyhole part of your buttonhole, give it a little tap and it cuts hole, hole right there. Now, if you cut enough of those, that extra fabric is going to build up inside here. That's what this little clean out is for. So that's what that hole is in the end of that. Just make sure you use a block of wood underneath it, not just your desk. You'll learn why if you do it wrong. Okay, for cutting your buttonhole open, that's what your seam ripper is for. And I'll show you that once we're done making a buttonhole. So to start out with, take out your buttonhole foot. You'll know you have it right side up if you can see that little letter A right there now it's probably hard to see on the video but you can see that little letter a make sure you put it on this way not this way so a right side up towards you also on the back of the foot you can see these little grippy things those are there to hang on to your fabric because you're going to have more than one layer and then you can see around the stitch hole where there are these two channels that's where the two sides of the buttonhole form that means that center lump, that's where the center of your buttonhole is. So when you make, mark your fabric, you're gonna wanna line those up with that center mark on your fabric. Now, how to make buttonholes that are the right length? First of all, I would suggest you make a, take a scrap of your fabric. It could be thick or thin, have batting in it or whatever, but take a scrap of your fabric that you're going to use to make a buttonhole on your garment and test it out before you actually make a buttonhole on your garment. Okay, to start out with, we wanna have this open. We take the button that we're going to use, put that right down in there like that. You notice this slides and that changes that distance depending on the size of the button that we have in here. It can make a fairly large buttonhole or a really small one depending on how you have that in there. Now to change your foot, Push that little button in back, take the regular foot off of there. Now this is a little bit bigger, so maybe you can lift that up a little bit, your presser foot lever. Make sure that's clicked on there right there. Now this foot does not have a slit in the side to put your thread. So what I like to do is needle down, needle up. Notice I did not hold the thread this time because I want to be able to pull it right through. Taking that one single stitch is how I got the thread through the foot. Also notice that this little guy tends to slide a little bit. All right, that's gonna slide as the buttonhole is being formed. So when you have your fabric under there, make sure this hasn't pushed forward. It should be all the way sprung back like that. Okay. Now let's say you're making a buttonhole on a shirt. This is kind of shirt weight fabric. You want to have three layers of either two layers of fabric and a layer of interfacing, which is quite common, but there's another way to make your front placket on your buttonhole and that's to fold it so you have three layers of fabric. I have seen shirts made that way. It's a nice way to finish the front placket of your shirt. Now we want to have a buttonhole, let's go like right there, I'm marking it. Your pattern probably has markings where you can mark your buttonholes. And then you want to have your starting mark right there. The buttonhole is going to form from the front and go towards the back. That's how it starts. Now, let's choose our buttonhole. So I want to choose number 44. I like that nice square end buttonhole. So I'm going to go to 44, just give this jog dial a good twirl until we get to 44 right there. I've chosen my buttonhole there. Now the next thing is to pull down the buttonhole lever. Now it's easy to forget to pull down the buttonhole lever, so that's why I combine these two things. It's easier for me to remember if, as soon as I choose a buttonhole, pull down the buttonhole lever. Now look back here where the buttonhole lever is behind this little knob. You wanna make sure it's behind there, not to the side, but actually behind it, because this is gonna tell the machine as you're sewing 
where to stop, change directions, and how long to make that buttonhole so you don't have to decide. The machine does it for you. Okay, so I've marked my buttonhole. I'm gonna lift this up a little higher because those grippies kinda wanna tend to grip onto my fabric. And notice also I have my thread tails off to the right. I'm gonna line this up so that it's, the markings are even, the red and the green markings are even with my long line that I've put in and the short cross mark. Okay, it's ready to go. And another thing to keep in mind is make sure that your edge of your fabric is parallel to the foot because you can have these lined up perfectly but if it's not parallel that buttonhole could be a little cockeyed you don't want that so check that to make sure so to start with keep your finger on the thread tails you can either use your start stop button with your foot control disconnected and that would mean it would sew the whole buttonhole and stop or you can just use your foot pedal so that's what we're going to do get started Thanks. So notice it's sewed backwards and forwards and it's doing that initial zigzag going towards the back. And it does a, a zigzag on the other side of the buttonhole also going towards the back. And then it makes a nice bar tack and a locking stitch at the end. And that's with that locking stitch, you don't need to knot the ends of your, um, your threads. It's all done now. And as soon as you lift up your press foot, it's ready to make another buttonhole of the same length. So the reason why the zigzag goes the same direction on both sides of the buttonhole is that way it keeps the stitch density the same. Uh, buttonholes that are formed on some machines where it goes zigzag one way and zigzag the other way, those two sides tend to be a little bit less dense. Now, when you are sewing with contrast thread, you would notice that more. If you're sewing with thread that matches your fabric, you don't really notice that that much. But I also noticed that on this particular setting, those stitches are a little further apart than maybe I'd want to have them. You can take your stitch length and reduce that and make your stitches more dense. The buttonhole will still stay, stay the same. Now, if on the other hand, you wanted them further, you could make them more. You could make that stitch length longer. The oval means it's on default. That's the setting, default setting. And actually, this is probably okay. Okay, so to open our buttonhole, you take your seam ripper, take a pin, Put this in the end of your buttonhole right in front of that bar tack. The reason for that pin is to keep your seam ripper from accidentally uh, cutting through the bar tack at the end. And you want to go straight towards the bar tack. I like to flip it over, reset my pin, and go from like the center out. I didn't cut my thread tails, but that's okay. I can do that later. From the center like that. Then, let's clean things up a little bit here. Cut off some of those thread tails. Right, pretty close to that little knot. And it's a little bit uh, thready looking there, so I'm gonna trim that off too. Also, if you do happen to have any threads that go from the fabric, go from one end of the bar tack to another, leaving a loop. You wanna make sure and get those out. That's important because your button could get buttoned through one of those loops and cause pulls in your fabric. So make it nice and neat and clean. That's what I like to do anyway. Now at this point, before you sew any more buttonholes or sew any on your garment, you wanna take that button, in this case, I'd have probably a whole card of buttons and I could just use one of those. But I wanna take my button and check to make sure it can go through the buttonhole. Not too tightly, but also not too loosely because we don't want that button coming unbuttoned by itself, right? So check, and this seems to be just right. If it is a little tight, that might be because you have a very thick button or you have very thick fabric or both. What you can do then is when you put your button in here, just back that off just maybe a click or two and try it again on your scrap fabric. 
So that is basic buttonholes. I hope you found this video to be helpful. This makes beautiful buttonholes. Try it out. If this video has been helpful, give us a thumbs up. If you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. We have lots of other videos on this machine and on other machines here on our YouTube channel. So keep watching. Thanks for watching today. Bye-bye.